Hey there, Construction One. We are working on storage shelving for inside the baseball and softball dugout storage rooms. And I've got a shelf drawn here in isometric view that will give you a, a visual understanding of what we're going after. And we're not going to start with isometric, but I can explain to you that isometric is perceived depth. The paper's flat, but you can see depth here through shading and these angled lines. Uh, we get an idea of these are two by four uprights. These shelves are two foot by eight foot or roughly eight foot long shelves. We've got one at three foot high, another one is at, up at six feet. So we're gonna draw this out. We're gonna first draw it out in an orthographic projection, which means a top view and a front view that align with each other. And uh, what that looks like on paper, this would be a top view of the room itself. Uh, from the video, the introductory video, you heard that the room is 10 feet eight across the back and seven foot four from um, from the front of the room to the back of the room. So I've got some shelves that are drawn in here with some detail. What I ran into on these sheets though is that I can't fit two views on one sheet. I don't really want to tape them together. So we're going to move over to 11 by 17 or bigger paper in order to put two views on. To review that again with a Monopoly house here, if we look at this Monopoly house, if we look at the front of the building, this is our elevation view or our front view. If we rotate that up and look down through the top, that would be our bird's eye view or our top view. So we're going to draw two views that align. I've already got those drawn once here. Uh, originally, when I started with this paper, I printed the lines too dark on the orthographic or grid paper. And so it was hard to see with a pencil. So then I went over it with a Sharpie, but that was kind of messy too. And usually you don't want to draw with a Sharpie. What I can point out to you here, though, is these views line up. So I've got my front view here. I can see my door handles, how they would open up towards me. The edge of the building or the edge of the wall lines up on the front view and the top view. On my top view, I'm looking down into the room. I can see how the doors would swing open. I drew that in. And then I've got my shelves here depicted from a top view. So we're going to reproduce this right now. You're going to draw along with me as we do this. And we're going to draw a scaled version of this room and start to lay out what we need for materials. So to begin, we need a fresh sheet of graph paper. And this graph paper is quarter inch graph paper, which means every four squares equal an inch. And the grid on here is exactly quarter inch. So if we look at every four squares, one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, everything lines up, which is great. Uh, we're going to use that to our advantage. We're going to have you orient the paper vertically. So you need a sheet of this 11 by 17. On the back side right now, I've got isometric, and we'll get to this drawing. We're going to start with our orthographic or our top and front view that align. We also need a ruler. We're going to use these rulers provided by the art department. They work out well because they're just broken down into the eighth inch, so it makes life a little easier. And we're going to start with our top view. So we are going to reproduce this drawing. And on our top view, our scale for this is going to be 1 to 24. And we did some uh, initial measurement recording here. The back of the room is 10 foot 8 and a half. The depth from front to back is 7 foot 4. So on paper, we're going to start with our scale down in the bottom left-hand corner. And that is 1 to 24. Now, there's a couple other ways I want you to write it. Another way would be one square on the paper equals 6 inches in real life. And we can also write a measurement, which is 1 inch equals 2 feet. 2 feet, 0 inches, okay? So 1 inch equals 2 feet, 1 to 24, or 1 square on the paper equals 6 inches. Those are all the same scale. The one we'll reference the most is probably this 1 square equals 6 inches. If we break that down into thirds, that means that a third of it is 2 inches, 2 thirds of it is 4 inches, and then the final is 6 inches, okay? So that gives us some idea of how we're going to use this scale to our advantage. Right there. So now we've got a scale established here. We are going to pick a location on the top half to draw our top view. And I would say just stay above the midpoint. You're going to be all right. And then I want you to go six squares over from the left-hand side, somewhere around uh, right here. We have to leave room enough. Uh, we have to leave seven foot four inches from the front to the back here. So we know that that's about three and a half inches. I'm going to go over six squares, one, two, three, four, five, six. Not that that really matters, kind of an arbitrary point, but I'm going to pick this as my bottom left-hand corner 
of my room. Now this is top view, so I'm looking down into the room, right? This is my bottom left-hand corner. From here, I need to go up seven foot, four inches. So how far would that be on paper? Well, again, every square is six inches. So that means every two squares is a foot or every half inch is a foot. That means every inch is two feet. So this would be two feet, four feet, six feet, seven feet, and then that four inches is going to be two thirds of a square, up that much. I'm gonna go over the width of the room. So from left to right in the back of the room, that was 10 foot, eight inches. 10 foot, eight inches, seven foot, four inches. So 10 foot, eight on the ruler, 10 feet is gonna be five inches. We can convert that right away. So I can go five full inches. And then eight inches is going to be, that'll be six more inches, that's 10 foot six, and then I'm gonna go a third of a square to be 10 foot eight. Now that I've got these two drawn, I can just coordinate-wise line up where these meet, and that's where I'm gonna put my other corner. I go across this line here, find out where that lines up vertically right here, and that is the other corner of my building because it's square. I'll connect that line down and together. Line it up a little bit more, there we go. And then across the bottom, this is where I need to show my room opening. So I've got double doors here that are going to swing open. But if you remember in the video, the left-hand side was two foot four and the right side was two foot zero. So they were slightly different sized uh, wall segments that came in to close in the front and set up the doors. So uh, two foot four on here is going to be one full inch and then two thirds of a block. On the other side here, our two feet is just going to be one inch. Okay, lastly, I can draw in some detail that includes uh, swinging doors here just to help me visualize this. My opening from uh, left to right is just about six, about three, three inches, so just about six feet. So I'm gonna pick the center point here. This is the center of my door, I can mark that. And I am going to have one and a half inch doors on each side, I'm gonna put double doors in. So I'm gonna draw an inch and a half line at some angle like this. And then I wanna uh, create like a swing to make it look like that door is opening. So an arc that matches like that. On the other side, inch and a half that comes out, a similar angle. And that just helps us visualize, oh yeah, there's a set of double doors here and they swing out. If they swung in, they'd probably get in the way of things. So uh, there's a reason that they do that. Uh, the rest of this top view, we're gonna save and come back to. We're gonna draw a front view right now. So from here, I'm going to rotate the building and look at the front of it. Remember for our, our um, Monopoly house, we're looking at the top view right now, like looking inside the roof. We're just gonna rotate that down and look into the front of the building. So the advantages here is these lines are gonna line up. We don't even have to do all of the measuring. The width is gonna be the same. We just have to pick a point that we wanna start down on the bottom here. I'll go somewhere about right here. And then I'm gonna pick another point across the same line. So I'm gonna come over here and allow this to help me line up. I'm going off the edge of that building. Oh, I'm off the paper here. Okay, let's do that one more time. So I'm lining up with the top of the with the top building here. Let's zoom out a little bit there. I'm lining up with my top view, and I'm going to pick a point down here. It doesn't really matter how far, just enough that I can fit my front view in here uh, towards the bottom of the paper, say eight squares up. I'm going to dot that, and then I'm going to come over here on the same line horizontally, and where these two line up, I'm going to dot that. That's my building corner right there. Now, the distance across the front, I can draw that line in because that's just going to be a solid bottom line. That's how wide the building is from left to right. My distance up, I did measure these, but in the video, I don't know that I talked about them necessarily. So we are going to draw that as 9 feet 4 inches tall. Okay, so that's going to be pretty tall in the front. It's going to go all the way up to 9 foot 4. So on paper, uh, 9 feet on paper... Eight feet is gonna be four inches. Nine feet would go to four and a half inches and then nine foot four would go two thirds of a square. I'm gonna bring that all the way across, meet it up over here. That's how tall my roof is in the front of the building. 
So I'll go over to that line right there. How do I know it's that line? Well, it lines up with these two and stops. Oh, I gotta go a little further, it looks like, to line up, and then I'll come back down. Okay, my front view, I'm gonna have doors that center on this opening. So my overall is five and a quarter. Uh, half of that would be two and a half plus an eighth, it'd be two and five eighths would be the center mark here, same center mark for my doors. Remember that my doors are an inch and a half wide. So if I go to the inch and a half mark, I'm gonna have a door that is here and a door that is here. And that should give me two feet on this side and two foot four on this side. And if I count, I've got one, one, two, three, four squares and a little bit bigger. So somehow I'm losing a little bit in here uh, with my doors might be a little bit larger because of a rough opening. But I can center on an inch and on center on the wall and go an inch and a half either way. The height of the doors, um, this is nine foot four inches. You can write that in. This width across the top is 10 foot eight inches. And then the height of these doors is actually six foot eight. And I know that because that's just what door heights are usually standard. So I'm going to draw those in right now. Six foot eight would be two foot, four foot, six foot and eight inches is going to be one full square and a partial. Same thing on this side, I can find where they meet up. That's going to be the other side door. Connect those together. Over the top here, just a straight line over the top to connect the two door segments together. Now remember, these are double doors, they swing out. So I'm gonna draw in a dividing line right down the middle. Let's make sure I'm in the middle here. Three inches, inch and a half, yeah, I'm good. And just for aesthetics, I'm gonna put a door handle here. And a door handle here. Something like that. So now it gives me a little bit better sense of what the room looks like. Inside the room, I'm going to draw in my shelving now. So let's go back to that top view and take a look at this one more time and see what we can figure out here. We're looking inside the room and these are our shelves. We've got solid surfaces on the top. This is plywood that we're going to cut down. And then underneath that, we have some hidden lines that are gonna give us some details about how these shelves are gonna go together. So these shelves are gonna to have to be slightly smaller than the room in order to fit in there. So we know this is seven foot four from front to back. So we can make those uh, seven foot would give us four extra inches on either side. And we're gonna go ahead and, and leave it at that at seven feet. So from front to back and just in off the outside edge, we'll draw a seven foot line. We want these to be two feet wide, which would be one inch wide on paper. So I have to cut an inch here because, or just slide over and that'll work. One inch wide on paper. And connect this together, make my rectangle. That's my first shelf right there. And that would be what I can see from the top view. The solid lines would be what I can see. What I can't see underneath there is how that shelf is supported. And that's what these dashed lines are for. Uh, we are going to make uh, two by fours underneath this on edge. So we would draw those in. They are only an inch and a half wide. So they're gonna be a little less than a third of a square. They're gonna be about this wide right here. Third of a square on this side. We'll draw those all the way around and make a perimeter of those. Oh, I have to draw this as a dashed line. Why a dashed line? Because it's technically a hidden line. We can't see through the plywood, but it helps us to understand that underneath there, there's something going on. We'll draw a dashed line on this side as well. Okay. 
And then we have our cross braces, and these cross braces are how we're going to support the shelf. We can't just necessarily run two long two by fours underneath there. We might, but we're going to put cross braces, and we're going to put those every two feet on center. So going across this way, this is going to be a shorter piece. It'll end up being about a 21 inch piece, but I'm going to draw hidden lines here. And then layout wise, I want to go every two feet. So this would be one, two, three, four, and we'd have another one on center here. We'll draw either side of that one. And we need one at four feet. One, two, three, four, right there. I can plant my pencil where I want to draw and then bring my ruler up to it, as long as it is in line with my graph paper. Slide this down to that you see over the top here. Put my pencil where I want to draw. Line up my ruler. I need one more brace piece in here. One, two, three, four. And this one's going to come up a little bit shorter than the others for, or just closer to the end, which is okay. It just makes it stronger on this end. So what I've got here is cross brace pieces. I'll have one on the end as well because I want to close this out. So I've got one, two, three, four, five cross brace pieces that are placed 24 inches on center. Now we might change the spacing of this just because we end up, this ends up being really short. Um, could we take one out? Maybe. Uh, maybe we'd go like 30 inches on center to take this one out and space them out a little bit more. We'll have to build, we'll probably estimate for one, two, three, four, five cross braces across this. Uh, a little bit on layout here. Why did we start a shelf this way from front to back? If we would have run a shelf all the way across the back here, we would have ended up being longer than our eight foot measurement, which doesn't work out well for sheet plywood. We want to think about, well, this piece we can cut out of a sheet of plywood and it'll just be a little shorter than a full length. And the two foot width is great because we'll get two strips out of a sheet of plywood. But if we wanted to run one all the way across the back, we'd have to have a really long piece of plywood, which they don't make mostly. Most plywood is not over eight feet. So we ran it all the way from front to back here. And then we're going to segment a piece in here. Let's make a similar or a mirrored shelf on the other side, on this side. So same thing here. We're going to go off the wall a little bit. Go with our seven foot segment. We're going to make this one two feet as wide, wide as well. So here's one, two, three. Put my pencil where I want to start drawing. Go to the back again, and then connect these together. These are solid lines because this is the plywood that we see. Then we're going to draw in our hidden lines here. Two feet on center for our layout. One, two, three, four. Uh, we have to draw in hidden lines this way first for our 2 by 4s running up and down underneath here. There's one side. And our cross braces. One, two, three, four on center. Put my pencil where I want to draw. And then this last end brace here, which ends up very short again. Lastly, I want to draw on this shelf. And the cool thing about scale drawing on this top view is we don't necessarily have to, we can measure and, and determine how long that shelf needs to be. So what's going to fit in between here is going to be a two foot, four foot, six foot, six foot, six shelf should fit in between here. So again, less than eight feet, it'll have to be cut down. We'll draw this across the back as well. And it's gonna be two feet wide, so one inch on paper. And we draw in our hidden lines for our bracing in the front and the back.
And then our cross bracing, we'll go every two on center, draw one in to start here. Two feet on center, one, two, three, four, and center on that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And notice how close we are to the end. So we might skip all the way to the end here just to save a board. Or we could, again, split the difference and do a little bit better layout here so it was evenly spaced. We would shift these down. If this is an additional six inches, we'd maybe shift these down uh, three inches, uh, sorry, two inches and four inches respectively, and that would give us even spacing. But from a top view, we can kind of see how our shelving would lay out. Now from a front view, what we don't have drawn in here is these uprights, and that would be these components right here, the, the legs, if you will. We're gonna change around that design a little bit. Right now it looks like the legs tuck inside here, and they do, and we're gonna change around that design and put them on the outside. It's gonna make them easier to assemble We'll build these platforms as independent platforms, and then we'll put the or screw the legs together after that. So, uh, what that's going to look like is we're going to have six legs that are that are braced outside here. Those are three and a half by one and a half inch rectangles when we look down on them on edge. So, a three and a half by one and a half, well one and a half this way, and three and a half back, which is going to be a little over half a square. We'll put one in the center of this which is going to be right about here. So one and a half by three and a half, and in the back as well. Same thing on the outside here. These would tuck up tight against the back wall and the side wall. And those are our uprights, and we'll be able to see those a little better from this view. On this side, we're just gonna pretend like we can see through the building here and we're gonna draw in these shelves over here. So on our front view, if we took the building from the top and looked inside it and we could see through these walls, what would these shelves look like? And what we'd probably have to do is lighten this up a little bit, like this outside wall, and these are more of a guideline now, and we wanna draw that shelving in here so we can see it. <clears throat> Everything would transfer down here, so like these uprights, if we look at the uprights here, they're gonna come all the way down. They're gonna to touch off on the floor and they're gonna extend all the way up to six feet high. So six feet on paper is gonna be three inches. Uh, just lining these up up here and with the lines here. And then I'm gonna go up with my two by fours, six feet. Okay, then I go over an inch and a half, not much at all, and I'm gonna come back down that's going to be an upright there. On the other side, I'm gonna go right against the back wall, draw on another six foot line, over my inch and a half, back down. That did not gap out well. Let's try again. I'm gonna go over an inch and a half, not much, and then back down. Helps if I can see on the other side of the ruler here. There we go. Now I wanna draw my shelves in. And remember I said that I want a shelf at three feet up and a shelf at six feet up. So let's go all the way up to the top. We can just cross over the top here. These are gonna meet up right at the top. And then how thick is this shelf gonna be? Well, there's gonna be a sheet of plywood there, which is about five eighths of an inch thick. So almost just a double line, not very thick at all. And then a two by four on edge, which is gonna be three and a half inches. So a little over half of a square right there, put my pencil where I wanna draw, slide my ruler up to it. There's shelf number one. And shelf number two is gonna be three, um, three feet up, which is gonna be inch and a half or six squares. One, two, three, four is two feet. This will be the top of the shelf right here. Over, double line for my plywood, and then down three and a half inches, something like right there. It's gonna be my second shelf. If I wanna draw some hidden lines in where these two by fours are coming into the end, I can draw hidden lines. That's how that joint's gonna work. That might be confusing for now. 
but those are going to be my shelves in the room. There's going to be a shelf that goes across the back at the same height. So I can draw that uh, after I get this, this other side drawn in here. And I want to be two feet over, so up six feet. up six feet, connect the top in, and it's basically gonna mirror this one so I can actually use these lines right now to help draw out the rest of these shelves. Line that up, solid, solid, and a double line for my plywood. This would be the bottom edge of the other side, two by four. and a double line for plywood. Okay, uh, a few hidden lines here. That's very detailed. And then that shelf that goes across the back, which would line up with these and go all the way across the back. So I'm gonna draw in one more shelf here and up a little bit short, up right by the door basically. Remember the door is six feet wide and our back shelf is six foot six so it's going to be a little wider and plywood on top of that okay um uprights in the back there there's going to be one in the center and one on either side these will be two by fours that are turned this way i actually don't see my two by fours here so i should draw those in there and Kind of already a pretty heavy wall line there. They're on edge. Oh, I'd have one more shelf here, horizontal. Draw right through my door handles. Again, these would be not so pronounced. We just drew them in so you could kind of understand what it would look like from a front view. But if you imagine like a see-through there, okay. And then our bracing, we're going to have a 2x4 on flat here. So from the center line, um, either way, about a third of a square. We'll go over this. This is our center brace. And then we need one on each side here. That's going to overlap these lines. So I'm erasing out these lines so I can draw in two by four, that will get screwed in like this. So maybe that helps. I'm gonna screw those two boards together. And I need one more over here. Erase out some space for my two by four. Screw it together. So I've got shelving inside there at three foot and at six foot all the way around on the inside of the room. This is a complete or relatively complete front and top view. I've got overall dimensions. I should have uh, from front to back, this would be seven foot, four inches. I can include that in. And then I can start to calculate from here what I'm gonna need for materials. 